are looking at one of the most interesting countries and one of my most favorite countries, and that is Sweden. Now, Sweden is a country that has an area of 450,295 square kilometers. And as of 2016, it has a population of over 9,995,400 people. And it is estimated that it is already at 10 million, which makes it the 89th most populous country in the world with a density of 23.1 people per square kilometer. And of course, before we get into the cool achievements of this country, we gotta talk about Sweden's imports and exports. For example, according to the OEC, it has $159 billion in exports and $154 billion in imports. But Sweden is known for exporting machinery and electrical equipment, which makes up a majority of the exports, coming in at $44.8 billion. This is stuff like telephones, forklifts, you name it, they got it. But refined petroleum makes up on its own 6.9%, and its imports, well, the machinery also makes up 40.2, with crude petroleum coming in at 7.2%. Now, when we hear of Sweden, we like to probably say, yo, these people speak Swedish. Now, this northern Germanic language is a descendant of Old Norse language, but the crazy part is this wasn't an official language until the country recognized it on July 1st, 2009. But besides its language, Sweden also has some really cool traditions, especially during Christmas. For example, since 1966, the town of Yavla has always put up a giant straw goat. And unfortunately, every single year, this straw goat is always burnt down, and it's kind of a non-acceptable tradition. in the last 200 years. This all happened after the Napoleonic Wars, which at the time Sweden had many conflicts with Russia. But the signing of the policy of 1812 was the beginning of its peace. However, the funny part is, is after the Cold War, Sweden has dropped its principle of neutrality, and although it's not mandatory among its people, to this day they still continue to lower its military might. But when it comes to the history of Sweden, its people have a great story. And one of the most famous stories 
stories is it is the first country to have a woman win a Nobel Prize for literature. This was Selma Lagerlof, who was a teacher and writer. And not only was she the first woman to win for literature, she was the third woman to win a Nobel Prize in history. And let's not forget that since 1901, the country is the country that gives out the Nobel Peace Prizes each year in Stockholm, Sweden. And we have just scratched the surface on this great country, a country that has led great contribution to the world and its development, a modernized country with a heavy history and culture dating thousands of years ago. This is Sweden, a beautiful country, a beautiful place where its people know that peace and wisdom are true strength. Now one thing that's interesting, archaeologists don't really know why or how the Swedish kingdom actually began. But they currently pin Eric the Victorious as the first ruler of Sweden, who ruled all the way from 970 AD to 995 AD. But during this time, Christianity started to become quite popular within the country. And as it stands, Christianity is the largest following within the country, with the Church of Sweden being the largest denomination, having 6.1 million followers. It is also the largest Lutheran following in all of Europe. And this is all due to one guy who's considered Sweden's father of Christianity. And that is Saint Ansgar, who introduced Christianity to the Swedish pagan communities in 829. And by the time of 1050, AD, Sweden was known as a Christian nation. Now considering we're talking about Sweden in the first millennium, we should probably talk about Charles VII. He was the one that ruled Sweden from 1161 to 1167, but he was known as Karl, or more commonly known as Charles VII. But what's interesting about him is he really didn't have anybody named Charles before him. There was no Charles 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So where did it come from? I don't know. And a few centuries after his reign, the kingdom had grown to become an official country in 1397, when it joined the Union of Kalmaris, which linked the countries of Denmark, Sweden, and Norway under one monarch. And it wasn't until about 400 years later in the 17th century when the country had formed as a great power, becoming known as the Swedish Empire. At that time, Sweden was under the reign of Gustavus Adolphus, who got to the throne in 1611. And it was during this time that Sweden began to join other European countries in colonization. For example, there's a new Sweden in Delaware in America, and some of the islands in the Caribbean have a very Swedish background or history. But colonization wasn't the only thing that was happening at this time. There was also the Thirty Year War, which even in today's world is listed as one of the worst wars in European history. And even though they don't have an exact population count during this war from 1618 to 1648, it is theorized that Sweden alone lost one-third of its population. All over Europe, the war claimed over 8 million lives and is known as the deadliest religion war in history. This all began when the Holy Roman Emperor, Fernandad II, imposed Roman Catholicism on its people. And because many countries were fighting with one another, Sweden had managed to conquer half of the Holy Roman states during this time. But however, let's move away from history and let's talk more about the landscape itself. Firstly, Sweden is a country that has over 95,700 lakes that are larger than 100 meters. And one in particular is the Bannern Lake, which is the largest in the country, coming in at 5,650 kilometers square. Now, it has a maximum depth of 106 meters, and it is the third largest in all of Europe, with an estimated 153 kilometers square of water. With all this water, I was quite amazed to find out that 50% of their local water supply comes from groundwater and not lake water. But Sweden itself is also a country of firsts. First of all, it was the first country to ban smacking of your child and child abuse. This happened way back in 1979. However, it's not as bad as you think. Police won't go around in the country arresting everybody who hits their kid. They'll just give them a very stern talking to. And this is because within Sweden, they like to keep an eye on their kids. For example, advertising to a kid under 12 is considered illegal for some companies. And with the youth, there's also education. Now you've probably heard that within Sweden, education is free. As a matter of fact, students are paid $187 a month to attend high school. And although it is true that 53 of the university and colleges within the country are completely free, that doesn't mean students are out of major debt. The debt is caused 
because the cost of living in Sweden is astronomically high. In Sweden, your rent is high, food is high, and Stockholm is one of the most expensive places to ever live. And it's not really a small price to pay because with education comes a lot of great opportunities. And Sweden itself is known to be tech central, as it has many companies that have created games like Candy Crush and Minecraft, but it also has some other reputable companies, and you guessed it, IKEA. IKEA was created by Ingar Kamprad in 1943, who was only 17 at the time, and in today's world is one of the richest guys on the planet. Now when it started in 1943, it was only a mail order business, and eventually selling furniture five years later. By 1958, it had opened its first store and international stores following in Denmark and Norway in 1963 and 1969. And since 2008, it is the most profitable furniture store in the entire world. Now, if you go to Sweden, you'll probably notice another company, but an American company, and that is McDonald's. They are everywhere. Swedes love them. As a matter of fact, the country has 225 of them. Now, that might not seem like a lot compared to other European countries like Germany or Russia, but gliding along with Sweden's population, per capita, they have the most amount of McDonald's out of any European country. And perhaps this is due to the fact that some people in Sweden love the American way of life. And to prove that, in the years of 1850 to 1930, 1 1.5 million people of Sweden's 3.5 million people moved to America. However, in 2014, 1 1.3 million people are considered foreign born. And out of that 1.33 million people, 64.4% of them are born in a country that doesn't belong to the European Union. But with all these foreigners, the question is, where do they go? Stockholm, which is a city which we will focus on for a future up to Facts video, is not only the capital of the country, but it is also the most populated. Now currently, they have over 1.3 million people, and considering we're talking about foreigners coming into the country and immigration, we should probably talk about the most important time of immigration in Sweden's history. And that time was during the Second World War. It is during the years of the Second World War that Sweden had become home to 99% of the Jewish community that lived in Denmark. Now, historical facts show that they managed to rescue 7,220 of the 7,800 Jewish people that lived in Denmark. And many of these people were smuggled through the Erasund Strait from Zealand into Sweden. And this is a reflection of how Sweden is a protector of rights for its people and others around the world. And one thing to mention before closing this video is that Sweden was the first country to ever abolish censorship. In 1766, it created an act to protect freedom of speech. This also allowed the freedom of the press. It was called the Law on Freedom of Printing of 1766, and this allowed for the first time in the entire world for state-authorized documents to be viewed by the public thus making Sweden a country of progression. We're gonna focus more on the achievements of the country. Now, for example, when you're driving, you may know of the three-point seatbelt. Most cars have them today. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure all cars have them today. An invention that has saved millions upon millions of lives. As a matter of fact, tests have done in the United States that have shown that it reduces 20 to 55% of fatalities in vehicles. And the first car to ever have a three-point seatbelt was the Volvo PV 544. And in case you guys didn't know, Volvo was founded in Gothenburg in Sweden in 1927. Now the Swedish may have given us the three-point seat belt and might be engineering geniuses, but it's not just cars they're known for, it's also bridges. The Erasund Bridge is a railway and motorway bridge that goes over the Erasund Strait from Sweden to Denmark. It is 7,845 meters long by 23.5 meters wide. And yeah, it may not be the tallest bridge coming in at 204 meters high. It stands as Europe's longest railway and vehicle bridge, and it only took five years to build. Now in Sweden, you may already know this, that it has only one time zone. This is because Sweden is very vertical in landscape. It doesn't stretch out over different time zones. But one thing to know is it was the first country to introduce standardized time across a whole nation. This happened on January 1st of 1889, and the reason for this was to get rid of confusion and delays for their train systems. Okay, one interesting fact that I loved about Sweden, and I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense, this can't be real, but apparently in Sweden, you can't name your kid Elvis or Ikea. 
What? And in order to understand why it's illegal, we have to dig deeper. Because it's interesting to know that if you have a kid in Sweden, the name of your child has to be approved by the government. And when you are having a child, you have to submit the name three months in advance before its birth. This started in 1982 and it is monitored by the Swedish tax agency. And I'm not gonna lie, I've never heard of a country having this sort of law before, so I feel like maybe this is the only country that does this, but I could be wrong. If you know of a country that does that, let me know down there in the comments below because I'm just totally out of the loop right now. Keep in mind, it's not just names like Elvis and Ikea that are illegal, but it's also names like Jesus and Allah because of their religious significance. So Sweden, Stockholm, it might be a really interesting place to go, but some of you may not be aware of the color by numbers. Now this is really cool. This is a permanent light structure located at the telephone plan in the city. But what's really cool about this structure is that you can change the lights through your phone. All you need to do is call a certain number, you get to use it for five minutes, and you press certain buttons on your phone, such as one to nine, to change the tower's colors. Speaking about phone calls, Sweden is the only country in the entire world that has a phone number for the whole country. Or at least they had a number that you could call, which was 46-771-793-366. And for a small amount of time, approximately 71 days, you could call this number, and they would connect you to a random person in the country. And you could ask them anything. We should do it right now. And call, speaker, here we go. No, it didn't work. Ah. Now the reason for this, it was all part of the Swedish tourist program. And overall they had 197,678 calls in 2006. Of course, when we talk about Sweden having things that other countries don't have and its achievements, we can't forget about the Olympics because these guys just know how to play the game. Sweden has been partaking in the Olympics since 1896, but as of 2017, they have over 600 medals. Wow. Sweden has won 494 medals for the Summer Olympics and 144 medals for the Winter Olympics. And in total, they have 195 gold medals for both Summer and Winter Games. And speaking about Olympics, Sweden has only hosted the Olympics once. This was in Stockholm in 1912, where they even ranked second, winning 24 medals that year. As well, they had 444 athletes competing. And throughout history, they have won second many times. But in 1948, they finally came in first at the Moritz Winter Games in Switzerland. Now, talking about one of my favorite things, alcohol. Let's talk about Absolute Vodka. Because Absolute Vodka is a famous drink from Sweden, and it was actually owned by the government. What? As of today, it is the third largest vodka drink in the entire world. And this is since its introduction to the international world in 1979. It was originally created by Lars Olsen Smith in 1879, but by the years of 1917, the country took hold of all the alcohol being produced within the country, basically making a monopoly over the entire industry, and the government of Sweden owned Absolute Vodka until 2008, when it was sold to the French group Pernod Richard for $8.3 billion. And although it may be owned by a French company, it is still produced in its original home of Aarhus in Sweden. Now, Sweden may have had a lot of cool achievements for itself as a country, but one thing its people are fantastic for are their intent to protect wildlife and cultural significance, as well as history. And one area of example is the Laponian UNSCO area. Inscribed in 1996, it is the world's largest unmodified landscape to be still cultivated by natives. It is roughly 9,400 kilometers square and is home to the Sami people. Now the Sami were indigenous people who lived in the area thousands of years ago. And they are currently one of the five minorities recognized by the Swedish government. As well, they are the people that the government of Sweden apologized for in 1998 for historical mistreatment. But the Sami people are famous for having a connection with reindeer for thousands of years, being the first people to not only domesticate them, but herd them. And parts of the Laponian area is used as pasture for their herding. It's also surprisingly home to a mountainous terrain, a small town, and three hydro stations. And speaking about mountainous terrains, this area is also home to the second largest mountain in Sweden. That is Mount Serra Tajaka, standing at 2,089 meters. And if you want to climb it, well, good luck, because it's not accessible by any road, and it'll take you approximately a couple days to reach the top. But what can be said about Sweden? It is really interesting to learn about the achievements of this country, and we haven't even listed them all. This is the country of Sweden, home to the people of the north, who may seem cold, but have very 
warm souls. So the Gotland submarine, it might be a diesel electric submarine, which many of you guys to yourself might be saying, oh, well, that's outdated, that's old, you know, that's pish posh, nuclear submarines are better. Not necessarily. Because even though it is not a nuclear submarine, it is considered one of the most advanced submarines in today's worlds, even by the standards in 2019. And what makes this submarine so fantastic is the fact that this sub is extremely quiet. You, know, you can't hear it. It's impossible. You have to have the best gear and the best ears in the world to hear this sub. Basically, it was so deadly that it managed to slip past American forces and destroy the USS Ronald Reagan in a war game. By the way, when this happened, the Ronald Reagan was one of the newest aircraft carriers for the entire American fleet. And when I mean that they blew up this aircraft carrier, I don't mean they actually blew it up. What they did was during the war games, they managed to get close enough to take photos of the aircraft carrier which in turn meant that they were capable of firing a torpedo at it and take it down. So you might be wondering to yourself, how did this happen? Why is this engine so quiet? Well, with that, we got to go back to 1987 and 1988. During that year, the defense company known as Cockham's Naval Solutions, which is owned by the subgroup, which makes the sub Gripen and all those great amazing fighters for Sweden. The company had recently developed a new form of engine for their submarines. This was called the Sterling Air Independent Propulsion Engine, or simply known as AIP. And in November of 1937, they installed this new type of engine on an older Nacken class submarine known as the HSWMS Nacken. As a matter of fact, to get this new AIP Sterling engine, the submarine itself had to go into dry dock and had to be extended by eight feet. Basically, they cut that baby right in half, split it, and then they added some more uh, metal, whatever they put on submarines. And shortly after that, this submarine left its dry dock on September 8th, 1988, and began years of testing for this new engine. So you might be wondering yourself, what is so good about this engine? Why does it help this submarine be so quiet? One downside to the diesel electric engines from the past is they were extraordinarily loud and they rattled and vibrated a lot and you could hear that through the sonar. But for this particular engine, its vibration amount is down to a very, very, very small amount and it makes it really hard to hear. One other big drawback to diesel electric engines is back in the day, you couldn't stay underwater for a long time compared to nuclear submarines, which yes, still to this day have a much longer range and can stay underwater for a long time. The new Sterling AIP engines allow the diesel electric submarines to work continuously operating underwater by burning liquid oxygen or diesel, which in turn allows the submarine to stay underwater in operation from a few days to simply a few weeks. And that's another thing when it comes to nuclear reactors with the nuclear submarines, they can also be quite loud. But another major advantage when it comes to the detection of submarines is that the AIP engine and the submarine itself is capable of keeping its infrared signature very, very low. And with the Gotland submarine specifically, these engines are designed to drive the 75 kilowatt propulsion system. As a matter of fact, to give you an idea how silent these engines actually are, one of the commanders of the HSWMS Gotland named Eric Linden says that this submarine is capable of going into much more shallow shores compared to nuclear submarines, which in turn says that there is nowhere in the world that this submarine could go undetected. Now let's jump back to the Nacken because it took only a couple of years for them to figure out the test for this engine was extremely successful. Because it was only shortly after that the HSWMS Gotland was commissioned on October 10th of 1992, and it was the first of three Gotland class submarines that were commissioned by Sweden, which all three were launched in 1995 and commissioned in 1996. This also made the HSWMS Gotland the first ship to be made specifically for the AIP system. Also with that, let's look at some of the specifics of the Gotland class submarine. 
As stated, there is currently three of them owned by Sweden. This is the Gotland, the Upland, and the Holland. And as for the length of this class of ship, it comes in at 190 feet or 60.4 meters. The beam length is 20 feet 4 inches by 6.2 meters, and the draft is 18 feet 4 inches or 5.6 meters. And as a matter of fact, for this submarine, it actually has four different engines. It's got a lot. The reason for that is because two of them are the standard diesel electric MTU engines, and the other two are the Cockrum's V4-275R Sterling AIP units. Basically, let's make some things very clear here. When the craft actually uses the diesel engine, it doesn't work quite as effectively when it comes to its stealth. Whereas if you really want to engage the stealth, you have to use the AIP engine, and that's why there are four engines. Now for the speed of this craft, they say surfaced, it's anywhere between 11 knots, which is approximately 20 kilometers per hour. But submerged, of course, submarines work much better, coming in at 20 knots, which is 37 kilometers per hour. Interesting enough, when the Gotland class submarine uses its AIP engines, it actually has to move much slower for it to be extraordinarily effective. And with that, they say for the AIP, it's anywhere between 5 to 11 knots. Within this ship, you also have a very small crew of 18 to 20 officers and approximately 6 to 10 seamen. But one thing that's very interesting about this submarine is that the ship is controlled by one individual for both depth and course compared to other ships. But for weapons, interesting enough, although it is a small submarine, as a matter of fact, it's got six torpedo tubes. Four of these are the 533mm or 21 inch torpedo tubes, whereas two of them are a little bit smaller coming in at 400mm or 15.7 inch torpedo tubes. On top of that, this ship can be armed with 48 times externally mounted naval mines. And for torpedoes, these are actually quite dangerous. Sweden loads up the Gotland submarine with what is known as the Torpedo 2000. Sweden also calls these type of torpedoes Torpedo 62, which is made by Saab Bofors underwater system. And these torpedoes are extremely fast. They can actually go up to 40 knots. So good luck trying to outmaneuver it. For their range, believe it or not, they can go as far as 40 kilometers and the submarine itself holds approximately 16 of them. Now, I know you might be thinking to yourself, oh, these submarines are a little bit older compared to some newer things on the block. Well, as a matter of fact, Sweden thinks that these are extremely effective, that they can keep them until about 2025. In which after that, they aim to be replaced by a new type of submarine known as Project A26. Now, here's the thing that I find that's very amazing about this submarine is the fact that during a war game in 2004, it was capable of outwitting the entire U.S. Navy that was taking part of the war game. And it was for over a year long. It was really insane. To give you the backstory, in 2004, the HSWMS Gotland was sent to the United States for a war game simulation. This war game commenced on the West Coast, starting out of San Diego. And crazy part is, in 2005, although they had been taking part of this war game for an entire year, the U.S. Navy had no luck in finding the Gotland. And because the United States knew that there was a problem with the way that they detected subs, they were like, wow, we were really determined to find the submarine, so we gotta lease it for another year. And it was actually in 2005 that the Gotland sub managed to slip past many of the battle groups, which included ships, planes, and anti-submarine detection objects, and was capable of firing several torpedoes, or as I said, taking several photos at the new $6.2 billion aircraft carrier known as the USS Ronald Reagan. And as a matter of fact, the submarine was so advanced and so efficient that it was capable of destroying almost all of the nuclear submarines that were in the war game. Hmm. And of course, nowadays, the submarine is now back in the hands of Sweden. And to give you an idea of how much one of these submarines cost, it's approximately around $100 million, which is relatively close to the price of an F-35. And as a matter of fact, just on a side note, considering it is related when it comes to the AIP system, Sweden is not the only country to have submarines that have this type of propulsion engine. This is because the Cockham company has allowed Japan this technology and the ability to build these subs, at least on a lease system. 
So there you have it guys, that is a look at one of the most advanced submarines in the entire world. So what are your thoughts on this guys? Let me know down there in the comment section below. Do you think this is one of the most advanced submarines in the world and much better than nuclear powered ones? I will say this, when it comes to nuclear powered, they do have a much longer range. Whereas unfortunately these diesel electric engines don't have the mileage, they gotta get refueled all the time. So that is kind of a downside to the Gotland class sub. 